A huge aspect to trading and investing is the mental game, and it does not get enough attention. Now, you'll hear successful traders and investors tell you that it's X percent mental and it's 10% this, it's 10% that. And some will even go as far to say that it's like 80% mental and then it's 20% technical skill. And there's actually a lot of merit to that. You see, as you progress over time, you start to realize that there was nothing new that you realistically learned on a technical perspective that changed when you went from consistently losing to consistently winning. But what did change is something up here. And in today's video, we're gonna dive deeper into that and a concept called the inchworm concept that Jared Tendler talks a lot about in the mental game of trading. And in today's video, I wanna break that down, make it visually easy to see, and then hopefully you can take this and run with it in your own trading and investing, whether you've read this or not. And for those who have not, this is gonna be a great kind of summary to get you on your way in just a few minutes. Now the inchworm actually can be implemented on the technical side too, as well as the mental side, but the whole concept is what we're gonna be kind of focusing on here in this video. In just a few minutes, you will have exactly what you need to run with this concept and implement it in your own trading as soon as today. Actually, I would highly recommend that you follow along with a pen and paper, iPad, or something so that you can kind of draw this out and start building this out for yourself. I'm gonna do just that here in just one second so we can visualize everything, but let's unpack what the inchworm concept even is. So if we think about it, how does an inchworm or a caterpillar, how do they move? As described in the book, it starts by stretching the body straight, anchoring the front feet, then lifting up from the back end. It bends at the middle to bring the two ends closer together, anchors the back feet, and then stretches its body straight again to take another step forward. Essentially, think of it as a bell curve that moves. Now, what Jared Tendler is getting at here is that your trading is just like a bell curve. And in order to continuously be improving, you want to be moving that bell curve forward. And towards the left-hand side, you're going to have what he calls your C game. That's where you're making mistakes. That's where you're doing things that you shouldn't be doing. Then you'll have your B game where you're not fully in the zone. You may be susceptible to errors here and there, but maybe you can get some winners. Maybe you can see some success there. You're just not completely dialed in. And then you have your A game where everything is running accordingly. You're following your plans. You're doing what you know you need to do and it's working out and translating to success at the end of the day in your accounts. So before we get into the representation here, let's think about this inchworm and if we can continuously kind of move our back end up and get that C game or work on that C game, it's going to translate to more B game, more A game, which means maybe less mistakes, less losers, and ultimately a more consistently profitable trading system. Okay, so let's dive into it. So from the inchworm approach perspective, we're looking at something like this, right? We're looking at a bell curve, something along this line, right? Where we have over here is our C game, over here is our B game, where we have most of our trading mistakes, successes. That's where we spend most of our time, right? Most of our trades end up being B game, right? Because we're not gonna be perfect, we're not gonna always be in the zone. And then over here is our A game. And so what we want to do with this interim approach is essentially we want to over time be able to move this bell curve to the right hand side, right? Move that hump over and continuously be working on our C game so that we can spend more time over here in our B and A game. And that is ultimately the goal with the inchworm approach. So if we take it from this perspective, how do we start to get into things? Well, there's two things we need to map. And the first thing is going to be the mental game. The second thing is gonna be more of the tactical game. That's your technical skill. That's when you're actually going at it and taking your trades. That's the other side, or let's say the easier side to understand and to map. So let's cover how this would work and then how you can take this and go implement it right now. So first let's pick mental or tactical. This case, let's go with the mental first. You'll do the exact same thing on the tactical side, but we're not gonna waste your time because this is all you're gonna need to get going. Map out your C game, B game, and A game. Right? Make different categories. You can do this on Excel. You can do this wherever you're comfortable. And we're doing it on an iPad to draw it out. I like to draw things. I like to write things. It just works better for me. Maybe that's not your style. Who cares? It doesn't matter, okay? But this is something that you're going to want to refer to at least once a week. 
This way you're always gonna be thinking about your C game, right? How can you improve your C game? Of course, we're gonna to wanna to stay in that A game and B game more often, but the game here is to move that back end of the bell curve up so you spend less time in your C game and there's less in the C game category that you have to actively deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. So what do you put in some of these categories? Let's just go over some examples. So maybe in your C game, you're realizing that mentally you're completely distracted. Dogs running around, kids running around, friends, this, TV's on, and you just got too much going on that is taking you away from focusing in on the charts, on the trends, on the patterns, but mentally, whether you realize it or not, in the moment, you're distracted. And many times you won't realize this till after the day's over or after the trade's over, and then you'll look back and say, well, why did I do that? It really comes down to diving deeper and taking the extra minute to think about what was the root of that mistake of where you went wrong or of that potential poor performance and figuring out what truly caused it. Maybe another thing that you recognize as part of your C game where you're making a lot of mistakes, you're noticing a lot of trading errors, a lot of red trades are coming from, it's something like overconfidence. So what do we mean by overconfidence? Well, maybe you think you know what's gonna happen next, which at the core of it all, we don't know what's going to happen next, right? And so maybe you're getting overly confident because you had a couple wins and now you're saying to yourself, oh, I got this one. I see the S&P moving this way, it's gonna go higher. And what happens is you take that trade and next thing you know, it ends up giving you a test to the lows and it goes the opposite way and you were wrong and you didn't take your loss soon enough because you just jumped right in thinking that it was going to go to the highs and you ended up having a much larger loser or you did that a couple times and you lost three times today for pretty much no reason. Now let's get to the B game. So the B game is where you could see positives and negatives. What we mean by that is that you might have certain situations or you might be in a mental framework that allows for things to kind of work out. Now, it wasn't perfect. You had something holding you back, but it kind of worked. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. And maybe you're kind of break even here in this category. Or maybe you have, if you're someone who's new, you could be a little bit red. If you're someone who's more advanced, ideally here, you'd still be green, but you're missing out on the potential that you could have had if you were operating under or in that A game mindset. First thing I think of could be something like you're hesitating a little bit on your trades. You're taking that extra minute or two to be like, do I really wanna take this? When you saw the trigger, you had your setup, you mapped your trade, everything was there. You did everything technically speaking that you needed to do, but you just hesitated because you were thinking about the last trade or you were thinking about maybe, you know, there's something else or you're just thinking, is this really it? When everything else told you that, hey, take it, but you just took a second and you missed out on maybe a slightly better entry. And of course, that could be something you want to optimize going forward. Maybe you're not trusting your gut. Maybe everything is there. Everything is telling you kind of along the same lines, but you just went against your gut and going against your gut might work out sometimes, might not work out sometimes, but you just weren't trading with what your original thought process was and that's leading to you jumping around left and right, playing this over here, playing that over here, and you're choppy. You're just chopping yourself up and you just don't feel in control at the top of your game. Then we get to the A game and maybe in the A game, you are laser focused. So maybe you're someone who is dialed in, right? You're dialed in, you're focused, you are trusting your gut, right? You're doing all these things that maybe you were not doing just back in your B game or C game. It's almost tough to describe, but maybe you just feel in control where you just feel like you are on top of your game and there's nothing that is scaring you, right? You are accepting the risks, you're dialed in, you're taking profits when you said you were gonna take profits, you're respecting your plans, and you are absolutely in control. Then on top of that, maybe it's fighting trends. Maybe back through your B game and C game, you will have you know, kind of mentally identified trends, what's going on, and a game, you're not fighting that trend. You are in sync with the market. You feel like you're in sync. You're trying to find the trends and stay in line with those trends. You could even classify this into the tackle category as well a little bit, but for the most part, you are in line and you are, as they say, in the zone. Now, what does this come from? This is, we just kind of did a quick example. What this really comes from is you journaling a little bit more at the end of your day. You don't have to interrupt your intraday, but what you need to do at the end of the day is start to go back and say, okay, on that trade, how was I thinking overall today? How was I thinking? How did I perform? Was I green? Was I red? And even if I was green, does that mean that I was actually in an A game mindset? Was I actually operating under my A game? Was I doing everything that 
I know to my knowledge, the best of my knowledge, that works for me. Spend a few minutes to reflect at the end of your day and understand what's going on in that B and C game so that you can ultimately move that inchworm up along over time. It's the simple concept of trying to suck less that's ultimately going to make you spend more time in that A and B game category. Hopefully that makes some sense. Again, this is thanks to Jared Tendler. This is a great book if you guys are interested in the mental game of trading. I'll see if I can leave a link to that down below on Amazon. Highly would recommend that to dive deeper and there's a lot more that he talks about in that book, but hopefully this video gives you a great base in terms of that inchworm concept and you can get off with this and implement this right now in your own trading. If you guys like these types of videos, let us know in the comment section down below. This is the TC Trading Channel. Hopefully we can make more videos like this going forward to help you in your own trading and investing. Thanks so much. Make sure you are subscribed and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.